thousand years. Now we are in the Hall of Mirrors at the exhibition Incarnations. Why do you think our African mask is the still most easy to communicate African art, but not the shield or spear, which in their design are much more abstract and contemporary? Well, the question really is about how does one look at the mask? And I use the mask because it's emblematic of the question of Eurocentric versus Afrocentric. When you look at the front of the mask, you're looking at the Eurocentric point of view because you're looking at what the mask looks like. The Afrocentric point of view would be to look at the back of the mask because people were meant to wear the mask, dance the mask. And so I use it simply because it's emblematic of making the point about reversing the gaze and looking through the mask rather than looking at the mask in order to understand what an African point of view is. So, what African art means to you personally as a white African and do we really need all the time to come back to colonial past because uh, it's so far away and today, we, especially in Brussels, we live in era of partnerships. Well, the partnership is an interesting point of view because again, it's not an even playing field. When Europe tries to save Africa, when Europe tries to speak about charity, when Europe tries to speak about Africa as a place that needs to be taken care of, you're suggesting that Africa can't take care of itself. What you're suggesting is that Africa needs to be helped and therefore it's an uneven, unequal relationship. Now, the mask is simply in order to make the point about how do you look at yourself. And when Europeans wake up in the morning and they put makeup on their face, when they put lipstick on, are they using any less masks? And so way to say, wait a minute, look at yourself in the mirror and try to understand how you are constructing your relationships by the masks you wear and everybody's wearing a mask sooner or later. Uh, so you think Marshall Plan for Africa is not relevant? Africans don't need this charity or Marshall Plan? The age of colonialism took 300 years to destroy African culture, African heritage, steal the gold, diamonds, minerals, coal, copper, uranium, platinum, cobalt from Africa, which are ending up in European bank accounts and in European economies. The Marshall Plan is a very, very tiny percentage of giving back to Africa what belongs to Africa. So no, I think Europeans should just simply leave Africa and allow Africans to take care of their own economies, their own politics and their own philosophies. So what about leaving Africa today? It's leaving also to Chinese. And what is Chinese impact on African culture today? That's a fascinating question because I find it interesting how Europe today is trying to say, don't let the Chinese decimate Africa after the Europeans spent 300 years decimating Africa. So it's a bit too late to be complaining about colonial tactics when the Europeans were the most guilty of any colonial empire on the planet. Now, let the Africans deal with the Chinese in the way that the Africans decide to, to deem fit. Let Africa be able to stand on its own feet and negotiate in its own way where it wants to be in the world in terms of economic relations and negotiating a very complex space between, let's say, capitalism and communism. Now, the reason why I mention that is the Cold War is over. But the word third world, the term third world, is coming from Franz Fanon, who was a great theorist, trying to understand where Africa might place itself in the world. And in fact, he said third world would be the non-aligned movement, as in take what you need from capitalism, take what you need from communism, and don't get involved in the fight between East and West. Rather create a third way. And I think what's playing out today in Chinese-African relations is that third way, which is not about the vested interest of the old superpowers of London, New York and Paris. So, um, don't you think there was anything positive in the past between Europe and Africa because they lived in synergy as um, from dawns of times actually we know them from Romans and before Romans and from times of Pharaoh so Africa actually is part of us uh, don't you have any positive outlook of what happened in the past because now you have been very negative about it of course there were positive things that happened in the past but why is it that the negative things outweigh the positive things. Yes, there were positive things. But let's actually speak about the crime against humanity called colonialism, which is the equivalent of Nazism. Let's start with the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, in which we address the losses that Africa had to sustain in order to have very small gains. Let's actually talk about how to put Africa as an equal partner to Europe without needing to loop back through European prejudice, European fantasy, and European desire.